Zettelkasten, documenting upcoming projects. Hello everyone, my name is Al Persson. I'd like to thank you for coming along with me on my Zettelkasten journey. What is Zettelkasten? Well, if you haven't, if you're new to this topic, it is a note-taking method that basically means slip in a box. Zettel is a slip or a card and a cast is a box in German. And uh, there's a lot going on. We're not just talking about taking notes and dropping them in a box and forgetting about them. There's a lot more to this. Now, I've been using this approach now for several months and it has begun to work for me. And I have uh, just said, look, I'll uh, start a journey and whoever wants to come along with me, that's fine. And um, this might help you in your journey as well to documenting things and so on. Now, I use the Zettelkasten approach as a second brain to try to get the stuff, the noise that's here out on paper in a way that works for me, but also that I can reference it and use it again and again. My past videos talk a little bit about this. I have probably, I'm probably starting two new business projects in the uh, couple of weeks to come. And they're both with um, very high profile uh, customers. I wish I could share the detail with you publicly, but I cannot do that, unfortunately, because of the in confidence nature of the work that I'm doing, it's commercial stuff and so on. Uh, but some of the concepts I can share with you. And maybe once they're completed, maybe then we can do that. Well, I've always had a problem when I get involved with these projects with the quality of the documentation that I leave with the customer. Uh, I'm not unhappy with the quality of the documentation uh, per se. It's fine. It's readable. It works, especially if the, uh, if the work I'm doing is um, uh, kind of nuts and bolts and, and just fits together nicely. But I, I sort of think, uh, I don't think, first of all, I have produced something that thinks like the business. I don't think that I've produced something that is um, that even I would like to read. It's like you've sort of done it. When you're documenting for a lot of businesses, and especially if the business is connected to government or or uh, to larger corporations, the, the documentation standards are, are immense and complex and difficult. And um, essentially, you put this together and, and it's almost never read unless you end up in court, I suppose, then someone goes through the fine print. But really, I want to document to be able to help my users and to be able to help the, um, the project to go on, but also to help me to be able to keep my thoughts in order. So as I'm approaching this, I'm thinking, okay, here's the upsides of these two projects. And then right away, I thought, uh, but the downsides, the documentation, and the one is going to be much worse than the other. I can, I can just feel it in my bones. And then I thought, well, what if I adapted the Zettelkasten method to documentation? And that's what I'm going to do. And as part of, and I'm going to share part of this with you along with some of the other things I've been studying, you know, in history and, and so on as I get a chance to do that over this very busy time to come. So what am I going to do? Well, this will use all types of notes that we've talked about. It will use, well, let's go through them. It will, there'll be a lot of fleeting notes and I might even use, uh, do fleeting notes on different types of paper. Let me grab you this other note box here. Uh, rather than go to the more expensive cards, I might just use, do fleeting notes with um, uh, little slips like this here because then I can choose to combine them later on into major notes. So what is a fleeting note? A fleeting note is the kind of note that you record because you need to record a thought, you want to hold it, but you don't really know where it's going to land, but it's very, very important. It's the kind of thing you get in when you're running, when you're in the shower, when you're talking to friends, it's like, bam, I've got that. And that's important. Now, nevertheless, even if I was to use something like this, I would still use my standard numbering approach. Now, my numbering approach is always this. It is, uh, it starts with the year, then it goes down to the month and the day. And it goes in this order. Two, if, for example, 2022, the 1st of December 2022 would be 20221201. Okay? And then the next one is 20221202. The first note of the day is 20221201A. The second note, B, and so on. That's always the same. Now, the reason that's always the same is that is a reflection of the timeline of my life. I can plug those notes in. I know where I was, when I was, and so on. The reason I use paper is because you can tell how you, you can tell on paper how you write, what you're on about on the day, what your mindset is. Now, maybe you can't, but I can. My writing varies depending on how quickly I'm writing, how thoroughly I'm thinking about things. I can look at a note and say, yeah, that was really important because I spent the time to write it. The other thing you can do on paper that is difficult to do otherwise is you can put an artifact on paper, an exclamation mark, underline, 
you can whatever you can strike through a word deliberately like two strikes means something it's a lot more difficult to do electronically you can of course do it but it's just more difficult so the concept is to the idea is to do that so there will be fleeting notes for sure a lot of them there will be literature notes that is when I read a reference to what's going on in the particular customer that is a reference that's important and needs to be kept I'll produce a note called a literature note will I link those back to bridge notes oh absolutely yes and how often will I do it once every two three days I'll go over my notes and then link them back to bridging notes or to each other and that's important that's an important element of Zettelkast and I haven't been very good at but I'm going to do this very diligently here so that is fleeting notes literature notes so literature notes are essentially quotes of um, uh, facts in literature or text or whatever and references to them quotes written out in my own words and then if possible put the reference the time and so on so that's two now what about how what do you do further from there an evergreen note what is an evergreen note we talked about that in the past now this starts to make sense for example the role of CFO chief financial officer does not that role always exists okay it um, there will always be a CFO role well I guess some businesses might roll that up under the CTO or the whatever but typically that's very very rare so you would say that there are some roles that exist in a business so you have your a CEO chief executive officer your CTO chief technical officer a CFO whatever as soon as those roles are determined for each of those companies an evergreen note will be created for those roles why an evergreen note well because the person in that role will not always exist it may not um, it may uh, retire may move to another company may die may whatever okay so that note is evergreen so yes the CTO used to be Billy Bloggs but but now it's Mary Smith so that's okay make comments and so I have those references will I put their contact details there well probably while I'm taking those notes but essentially that evergreen note has to do with how I'm dealing with them so that's going to go on evergreen notes are the pro the only in my understanding uh, so far the only notes in Zettelkast that really will tend to go because they're you know, get larger and larger and larger are they atomized yes but they will have uh, they'll grow as the, the condition changes we talked about that in the past I'm open to suggestions by the way from any of you who've got ideas as to how this could be improved because it's the first time I'm going to throw um, I'm going to use this approach for documenting projects okay now the final or the next note type will be the permanent note and that is the one that does not change so what will be in the permanent note well the permanent note and by the way we're coming back to evergreen as well there's another thing that where we'll use that but just let's do permanent notes in a set for a second let's say a permanent note will be a reference to the building or the where the, if it's important where the air conditioning plants are or um, where the fire alarm panels are depending on what kind of work I'm doing right so if I'm if I'm integrating with um, fire alarm panels then that would be important because they're relatively permanent items would they go on notes yes well what I can I, what can I do then I can actually take the settles and turn them into documentation at a later time I don't have to do this ongoing a daily grind documentation because I have a second brain that's doing all of those things and in fact if the documentation issue ever comes up I can just take the whole the whole bunch of zettles and put them out on a desk and say here it is and use and show my second brain to the observer's second brain now what else would be in permanent notes well I think that's probably where I would leave permanent notes in a document in, in um, uh, documentation mm, possibly things like software licenses or hardware licenses those those are probably going to be reasonably consistent maybe references to suppliers uh, ah, it's hard to say back to evergreen though when you're talking about bringing new processes into businesses you're talking about a constant evergreen scenario and this is the thing I'm going to have to get my head around again I'm open to advice and suggestions from anybody in the audience how would you do that how can I do it better so let's say I've got a, a, a better process um, for uh, oh I don't know um, uh, client engagement client engagement on site and they've said fix the client engagement on site be sure that it's um, it's better electronically that the digital experience is better and, and 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 so on so is that going to be something that will always be the same oh no it's going to change all the time 
So now you're talking about evergreen notes. Probably you would do a dating thing on an evergreen note. Every time there's a change, you'd age out an old evergreen note and you'd put another one in place. Maybe you would have an evergreen section called client engagement. And then you would just flip those things out. You just age out the old ones. Well, what do you do when you age them out? Do you destroy them? No, you put them in the back of the box somewhere because somebody sometime is going to say, remember when we used to do this for clients? Oh, I remember, I've documented all of that. I know when it started and when it stopped, okay? So then what you can do is you can take the entire Zettelkasten approach, everything, if I write them neatly enough and I get and there's enough money or there's a document around, I can hand it to somebody and say, here, produce the, do <laughs> produce the documents, get it out of my life. Or, and probably better, I can take those documents, those cards, and put them in a wiki. You've been to Wikipedia and so on because they're already related with the links and the cross-links in the Zettels as I build them. Now, could I build it in a wiki to begin with? Yes, but again, you have the flexibility. It's a lot easier probably, this again is the software, hardware thing, so a lot easier probably doing this. You can sit down on the train when you're going through these, you can flick through them, you can make additional comments and so on. By the time you get them in the wiki, you want them reasonably ready to go, okay? So anyways, a couple of projects. I will take you along the journey with me. Even if you say, this does not work for me at all, you might benefit from looking at the line in the sand that I'm drawing. And you might say, okay, well, Al, you know, I, I'm definitely not going to do that, but at least I'm going to do something. You ever notice that in life, there are um, uh, many things are undefined until you see somebody else's opinion or somebody else's approach. I'm just so glad to have you along with me on this journey. Send this to your friends. Send me any thoughts you have on this. I'm really curious to know what you think and if you can help this approach work better or if you think, hey, this is an entirely untapped thing in Zettelcast and in documentation, why not use this tool for that? And maybe you might come and say, this is not a portable approach at all, Al. You need your head read. And if you do say that, you're not the first to have said that about me. My name is Al Person. You can contact me at pastor at mascot.church or in the comments below. Like, share, subscribe, send this to your friends, your enemies, whatever, if it is useful to them. We will talk again soon.